close your eyes. Focus on your breath. Watch the breath as it comes in. Watch as it goes out. Know the breath all the way in. Know the breath all the way out. And notice to see when your mind wanders off. As soon as you catch it wandering off, bring it right back. Wanders off again, bring it right back again. If you keep this up, you get to know your own mind a lot better, which is one of the big ironies in life, is the thing that's closest to us is something that we know the least. We don't really watch our own minds very carefully. We're focusing all, all our attention on things outside, often things that other people do or things that just happen outside, without realizing that the most important things that we need to pay attention to are the things that we're doing, the choices we're making right here, right now, each time we breathe in, each time we breathe out. This is one of the reasons why we focus on the breath. Because it keeps us anchored in the present moment. It keeps us anchored right next to the mind. So we can know the mind's comings and goings and decide whether it should go or come in the way it is. If it seems to be going a place you don't want it to go, you see that's going to cause harm for yourself, harm for other people. If you're not here, you can't stop it. It's just going to go. But if you're here watching, you do have the opportunity to say, okay, I don't want to go there. I can see where this is going, no matter how much I may like this, but down the line it's going to be bad. I've got to say no. As for, and then you can direct your mind in other more skillful directions. As the Buddha said, the main reason we suffer is because of our ignorance, and we're ignorant of largely of our own mind. We don't see what we're doing to cause suffering. The problem is we think we know. This is where it gets really difficult, because ignorance doesn't mean just not knowing. It means false knowledge as well. We have lots and lots of false knowledge about things, our ideas about what's going on with other people, what's going on. Even inside our mind we have lots of false knowledge because we're not watching carefully. Now with other people you can't really look into their minds. And as things get further and further away it gets harder and harder to check. This is one of the reasons why the Buddha said that one of the most important precepts that we take is that one against lying. Because when people lie, they're spreading false information around. When people are acting on false information, false knowledge, they can do all kinds of unskillful things. As the Buddha said, this is why we suffer, is we're operating on false knowledge. And so. It, in the line with the principle of karma, the less false knowledge you spread around, then the less false knowledge is going to come your way. I noticed when I was in Thailand a couple of weeks back, people would ask you what's going on. I said, I really don't know. It's just a lot of rumors. And the rumors were coming thick and fast. And so and in a situation like that, like that, you're never going to find out the truth because there's so many rumors flying around. That's the way it is in our country, too. It's just things that we have no way of knowing. We believe what other people say, but we don't really know. And yet we have lots of very strong opinions on that and can get into big fights over it, all about things that we'll never really know. Whereas the things that we could know, we're totally ignorant of. We could know what our mind is doing right now, whether it's going in a skillful or unskillful direction, whether you're planning to say something skillful or unskillful, do something skillful or unskillful, think something skillful or unskillful. If you were staying right here all the time, you'd know. And that way your life would be much better ordered. You'd be causing less suffering for yourself, less suffering for the people around you. So even though we may not be able to get to the truth of things outside us, we can get to the truth of what's going on inside. Look for the causes of suffering inside, cure the causes of suffering inside. And that takes care of the big problem in life. When you're not causing yourself excess suffering, you're less of a burden on other people, and you have more time to help them. You hear some people saying that this path is a selfish one. It's not. It just simply points out the fact that you've got to take care of yourself first. It's like those announcements they have on the, on the airplanes. You know, If the oxygen masks come down, put your mask on first, then you can help other people. If you try to help other people put their mask on, you don't have enough oxygen. You'll faint and they'll faint, and that's, nobody benefits that way. But if you look after yourself, then you're in a better position to look after other people. And this is where it starts, is really knowing what's going on in your mind, So which is why you have to stay firmly planted in the present moment watching things as they come in through your eyes, ears, nose, tongue, body, watching things as they come out in terms of your actions and your words, so you can get a sense of what things are important to focus on, which ones are not, which things are important to encourage, which ones are important to discourage. And that way there's going to be a lot less suffering in the world, because you have a lot more true knowledge of what you're really doing. And this is where true knowledge starts, knowing your own intentions. If you can't know your own intentions, there's nothing else you can really know. You're just operating in guesses and rumors. So get some true knowledge here about what you're doing, 
And from there, that knowledge of the truth will start spreading out so you have a better idea of what's going on in your life, why it's going on in your life, because you're more in control. And you're standing at the spot where you really can gain true knowledge. 